Hello Gunpla fans of YouTube. It's time for another Gunpla review. So if you've been paying attention and I've seen some of my live stream videos I've been doing posting recently. Um, I've been working on the Master Grade Aegis for the past couple weeks. So I uh, got done with that a few days ago and now we're gonna show off the kit and do a little quick re review of this thing here. So here is the Master Grade Aegis Gundam itself all completed and up on the stand. Let me get him spinning around here. Like so. And you'll probably notice first off he is on a stand, an action based stand. Uh, if you're planning on getting this kit, do consider getting an action base to go along with this kit because as you can probably see he's got some massive side skirts and kind of a big back end. He is a bit top heavy because of that and you're not going to be able to get too many good poses on the ground with him so this, this is definitely one of those kits you need to have an action base for uh, action base for in order to get the most out of so so there he is going around a lot of uh, pink in this kit here it's kind of a it's a reddish pink color a uh, little bit of uh, dark blue and interspersed in there along with some white which is not really that noticeable because the kit's kind of drowned out by all the uh, pink here but anyway uh, let's uh, show up the articulation here and then we'll talk about the accessories okay so you can probably tell right off the bat I just want to explain but this guy is actually kind of hard to handle uh, because there's like so much stuff sticking out like sharp pointing things sticking out these feet, the blades and size of the shoulder the head and everything everything moves on this kit here so you kind of have to be careful where you're holding it because stuff moves all over this thing here so but in terms of the mobile suit mood and articulation we'll start at the top here the head actually has a pretty good bend back as you see there and then also bend forward about like so uh, side to side it depends on what position the neck is in but you can get this kind of range out of it before it hits the massive shoulder pieces here overall pretty good for the head uh, in the torso here it's, it's a ball socket that connects it to the hip joint here so it can go around it can go back and forth a little bit like so and tilt back and forth. Most of that is just all in the ball joint that's, that's here. And the chest here, we do have the open cockpit, which actually opens up pretty easily. If I can flip it open here. Top, and then this piece in the front pops out. See Afrin in there. I don't know if you can, but he's in there. Close that back up. Uh, arm articulation here. Can go up like so before this armor starts to hit parts of the chest and won't go any further. Arm can rotate up at that joint there. Get a full almost 90 degree bend. It's just sort of chunkiness of the arm forearm starts to get in the way. There. Hand is on a ball socket in here so it can move around like so. terms of you can have the arm reach. If you finagle with the head a little bit you can get move the shoulder and have the arm reach about like so. Now the only uh, articulation joint this, this uh, arm is really missing is that there is no forward there's, there's, there's no there's no cavicle joint on this thing at all so it won't go back and forth like it's it, like you see on most uh, master grade kits and even, even our real, and real grade kits even and even some high grade kits too have that but not the Aegis Gundam doesn't have that and that's mainly just due to the transformation in the chest here that it can't really do any of that moving on down the kit we do have the front skirt armor I can move out the way like so uh, you know, this is front piece here keeps coming off it's supposed to lock in place but you press on it it comes out uh, these massive side skirts here, there, there's some interesting stuff going on here. Of course they can move like this on this joint here, but the entire piece can also move in and out like so, like this. And these end pieces can slide out. Let's see if I can get this with one hand, like so. And a little bit of mechanical detail right there. Now you can adjust these uh, side skirts to move around. 
you have to kind of pull them out a little bit because there's a little bit of a ratchet that holds them in place. So you can move them up like so or move them down if you want. It's usually easier just to have them like this, but there is a little ratchet in here. I don't know if I can show it here. Probably hard to see. Yeah, this is yeah, this is really hard to see because the light won't get in there. But there's a little ratchet right here that'll lock this in place. You can kind of get into position where you want it, and it'll pretty much just stay there. Now on to the leg articulation here. And then all the way up like so, and stab himself in the arm. So really good there. The double joint bend at the knee right there. Let's put the side screws out of the way. Our legs can come all the way out like so. So we can do the splits really easily. Down on the leg here, there's a double ball joint on the leg. About back that far. And get that out of the way, can move forward about that far on the leg. Side to side, pretty decent, like so. These little flaps on the side will move out of the way. You can position the foot however you want. And lastly, on the back here, these pieces will move. The top piece moves back and forth, and the back piece will go up and down, like so. Okay, well in terms of accessories, so we'll talk about the hands here first. Uh, these are the swappable finger type uh, fixed pose hands. Right now I've got the closed fist fingers on here. Uh, you also have a holding grip hand finger, which doesn't really have a lot of use, for, use on this kit. Uh, you have your open hands, and you have a pair of the trigger finger holding hands. All right, we also got the shield here. It's pretty basic shield. Um, it's it's decent. There's nothing really too special about it. Uh, the only problem I kind of had with the shield is that you have all these little open spaces on the back of the shield like this. Um, if you're going to be painting this kit, it will probably be recommended to uh, fill all this in. But I noticed even on the box art of the kit, this is all filled in on the box art. <laughs> I don't know if that was like an oversight or what, but yeah. Yeah, and the shield well, has a little couple connection point pegs on it. Camera on camera, focus. Focus, please. Uh, there's a little tab here, so there are two different lengths of attachment pegs on here. The short peg is for attaching directly to these holes on the side of the arm, like so. And we'll just connect right on like that. The longer peg is for connecting to the side skirt. It'll, it'll go on the side skirt just like that. Now the other accessory is obviously we got our beam rifle here. The kind of a unique looking beam rifle for the Aegis here. There's a little slide mechanism on the back that can go back out for it. I think this is mainly for folding the grip in like that for storage. Now there is kind of one problem that you kind of have with this kit is that the trigger finger, trigger finger hands don't really hold the beam rifle all that well. You're, it doesn't really, it doesn't really stay in there. Like the slot and the uh, handle here is like too shallow for this peg on here to really attach into. So um, if you're having trouble getting the beam rifle in, um, you're, you're not alone. <laughs> it doesn't like this. It's very hard to get it to stay in there because it, it doesn't really, it doesn't wedge itself into the handle very well. And I find I have to really finagle with this to get it in. And there, finally on there. <laughs> took, me, took me like a minute to get that on there. That's not particularly easy. But in terms of more difficulty, you can also have the shield be handheld by the Gundam as well, the, by the little grip on the back here. You have to use, use the open fist, and that's really the only use for this. And again, this is equally as difficult as the beam rifle to do. Let's see if I can do this here. And there it is on there. That's almost as hard, if not harder, than trying to get the beam rifle in the hand. But it's in there now, so we got beam rifle and shield. Typical of a Gundam mobile suit. But wait, there is more. Let me get the beam rifle off the hand here. Because the beam rifle has a little adapter so that it can attach to things. It is right here. 
has a little slot on the end this goes right here on the beam rifle and you can also attach this to the beam rifle slot right there for storage if you want or alternatively I'm just going to pull the shield off for this bit you can also attach the beam rifle right there on the shield so if you want it held like so you can all right now as you can see he really doesn't have a have much trouble holding that up with all that weight on there but it is still a pain in the ass to kind of get stuff on here without stuff falling off like i had the whole arm come off while i was doing this all right and our other real accessory here is all these lovely beam blades you get four of these blades they go on the white parts that are sticking out all over the gundam here and they just slide right on they're really easy just like that and there's one for each limb limb of the kit and so you can have it like that with all four beam blades powered up on and ready to start slashing some stuff and we do get a action base connector it goes right here underneath the front skirt armor and there is like a blank piece you can stick on there if you don't if you're not using the action base but since I'm gonna be using the action base for this for most of this kit I'm just gonna leave that on there okay now the big part transformation this guy is about as complicated as the Zeta Gundam in terms of transformation might even be a little worse in a few areas but probably a little better in some other areas too but yeah this is gonna take a little bit of time here so we're gonna start with the head here now the head can pop open I find it easier to move this segment forward like so Ooh, tilt my camera just a little bit more so you can see that and the antennas will bend back like so now up in the front here on these chest pieces they're actually hooked on to a catch that's holding the back piece in so all you gotta do is kind of unlatch these and then the whole head and backpack segment will fold back now this is supposed to go like so, with the head going down and the tail coming up. So we're kind of going to try and do these roughly at the same time. And the head will just stick down like so, while the tail sticks straight out. Alright, now the arms here. The arms are going to be very similar in, in look and structure to the legs. Uh, that's no coincidence here. And what you want to do with the arms here, you want to move the whole foot piece forward here. We also want to take the hands off. And that's going to come around like so. Fit right over that. Uh, this arm will actually slide out just a little bit like that. And you rotate it and then lift it up. And then it, it may try it up with the shoulder armor. And now it looks a lot like the legs of the kit. Now this whole piece here will come out, pulled out like so. And there's your limb right there. Okay, the next thing to do is you have to move these little gray pieces on the side of the chest out and then rotate them backwards. This is really hard to pull off, I found. And this guy will like to come apart easily while doing this. And there we go, I got one. So I can get the other one. I'm going to be like that and push them together so you have it like that uh, this chest piece here will actually move up like so and these pieces will rotate forward when you get a chance here uh, these leg pieces do need to come out just a little bit all right there we go that took a little bit of an angling to get that looking right because these little vent pieces have to be facing forward like so all right, now I got the legs kind of stretched out as well. Uh, they're going to point the feet out on them like so, and there is a little lever on the back. I can show it here. This little piece right here is a lever. Pop that open, and the leg will, the whole foot will slide in like so. Then just press that back in, and that will hold this leg piece in. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, by far this is going to be quite a bit of a mess. It's kind of half Gundam, half limbs here at this point 
And now it's really just a matter of making sure you get these little joints on the right here. And let's see that. Yeah, this thing keeps detaching from the skirt armor. Uh, you can probably see there's little round joints. You want to make sure those are all positioned correctly so that the limbs can all come forward. And you may have to pull the legs out a little bit in order for it to spin all the way around correctly. Okay, so after much finagling, you should have something that looks something like this here, where the limbs are all pointing the same direction and they're roughly the same length. Uh, the skirt armor drops down out of the way. You want to pull this in like so, and make sure the skirt armors are kind of folded and tucked together neatly like so. In addition, I forgot to mention, you do need to move the side skirts so they are parallel with the uh, tail binder here. Uh, the ratchet will actually hold these in place so they just stay looking just like that. And while you're doing, doing this, go ahead and take the action mace connector off the uh, front skirt armor. There's actually a slot on the back here underneath the back skirt armor where this can go. So you'll be ready to put this on an action base when it's all together here. It'll go right there. And of course the back skirt armor will have to fall off really easily, but you can just stick it back in. Alright, by this point you should be able to move all the limbs facing forward like so. Then all you have to do is kind of angle them so that this goes into the mobile armor cruising mode. I suppose that's what it's called. And you need to line up all these fins on the front here so that they kind of come to a point. Again, this may take quite a bit of finagling to make it look right. And after much finagling and getting all the arms in the right angle and everything, you should have something that looks like this here. So this is the mobile armor mode of the Aegis Gundam. Um, it is still kind of a bit of a mess to me, but I guess it works. Head is tucked down right here. Tail binder is parallel with the side skirts. And the front skirt armor is tucked up underneath like so. Alright, and as I've shown before, you can go ahead and stow the beam rifle and the shield on the side skirts here so that the shield and beam rifle will still be on the kit while it's in mobile armor mode. Okay, so after much more finagling and making sure you get all these little round joints in the right position, you can actually get the mobile armor into attack mode, or the face hugger mode, if you want to call it that. So all the limbs will spread out kind of like this with the blades about to like grab you and just kind of cut your face up or something like that if you want to. Uh, this exposes the uh, beam cannon that's right in the middle right here, so you can fire off that beam cannon, grab somebody at point blank range and just blast them and they'll be dead. Unless they have some car unless they have some sort of plot armor, which I mean, I, I don't know if that's actually a thing that happens or not, but it's just a rumor I guess. And for the extra added deadly effect, you can go ahead and add the beam blade to this to make this even more dangerous and you want to be very careful with it when it's like this otherwise you might poke your eye out oh additionally there are all these little thrusters that are on the knee parts on the kit here that can open up giving you a little bit of extra thrust while it's in mobile armor mode both on the legs and the pseudo arm pieces which look like legs now all right guys so that's the master rate you just gunned them uh, Went ahead and undid the transformation here, and that is just as tedious as getting him, in, getting him into mobile armor mode. Um, this is definitely one of the master grades with the, mo with the more challenging type of transformations, because everything moves on him. Like I said, this is probably comparable to the Zeta Gundam transformation. It's, it's kind of on that level here. Um, but anyway, overall, I do think this is a pretty good master grade kit overall. Um, it has a lot of nice detail throughout the kit here, even especially on the inside of some of the uh, parts and everything that are kind of covered up here. But and the color is pretty good, even though the, the the pink color is a little bit overwhelming. But that's really just the way the Aegis Gundam is. Uh, the accessories, the beam rifle and the shield, are pretty basic, not a whole lot to them. Um, I do really like these custom beam blades for this kit here. I think these look really nice. Um, articulation is is above average I would say. Like the only, only thing really missing was the cavicle joint in the arm, but otherwise he can pre-pose pretty well. Um, I, ha I haven't done a whole lot of posing on the ground with him because again he is kind of very top heavy and 
You might be able to get some poses out of them on the ground, but it's going to be really hard to do, I imagine. So, and like I mentioned at the beginning of the, the review, get get an action base for this guy because you will definitely need it. Because it, even for mobile armor mode, you need to have the action base for it. So. <laughs> But um, overall, a uh, pretty good kit. Um, I would pretty much recommend this kit if you are interested in the Seed Master Grade kits and or just have an interest in the Aegis Gundam at all because this is still a pretty good kit. Um, that said, I wouldn't really transform it too often. I think this is probably going to be the last time I ever transform this kit because I do worry about wearing out the uh, joints on the limbs and everything by uh, transforming it too many times. But uh, it's if I had to give it a score out of 10, I'd probably say an 8, eight out of 10 kit here. There's a lot of things it does good. There's some things it's kind of not that great of, not that great at doing, but that's mostly due to the transformation of the kit. So overall, I hope you found that review informative if you're considering this kit. Um, I think it's priced a little bit above average uh, for the Seed Master Grades. It goes for 4,800 yen. It's a little bit above average for a seed kit, and that's mainly just because it's a transforming kit, so a lot more thought and engineering had to go into this thing. Um, anyway, that's going to be it for this review. Uh, see you guys on the next review whenever I get around to it. Hopefully I'll do another one soon. Hopefully it won't be too long. Alright. Anyway guys, take care and bye-bye.